<laughs> Hello and welcome to Core Finance, where I'm joined by, um, I forgot who you are. <laughs> you put me off. That's hugely well-timed, yes, sorry. And go. Hello there and welcome to Core F <laughs> Sorry, I'll get there in the end. I'll get there. <clears throat> That's not even funny. Anyway, it's, it's not the old, I, it's never happened to me before excuse, yeah, 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 isn't it? Yeah, right, yeah, yeah. yeah. Hello there and welcome to Core Finance, where I'm joined by... Mike Ingram. <laughs> I'm not doing anything, for the it's, record. It's, you, you've put me, you've really thrown me there because of your thing and everything. Um, okay. Hello and welcome to Core Finance, where I'm joined by Mike Ingram, a strategist of EGC Partners. How are you today, Mike? I am well, Zach. Thank you very much. We're in the, uh, well, we're actually in between. We're in the middle of um, Janet Yellen's uh, testimony, uh, first yes. to Congress and then the Senate. So is that, is that the way around? It the, well, Congress is the, is, the, is, the, is the House of Representatives plus the Senate. So, yeah, technically it was the House of Representatives yesterday. Today it's the Senate. I mean, she's not really going to be saying anything very different. Obviously, there'll be an extensive Q&A. But I think... There's a lot of weird stuff been going on in the Fed recently. So um, the longer term perspective is that the Fed has always said that it's been data driven. Historically, when the data has tended to come in soft, particularly on things like, such as inflation or you know China's blown up, then the Fed has immediately backed off raising interest rates. This year, it seems to be in a bit of a different gear because um, even though, again, incoming inflation data has been soft, um, they're still saying they're data driven. They, they're saying that the, you know, the incoming inflation data they've, they, uh, they've received is an aberration. It's all about lower pharmaceutical bills or lower mobile phone bills. It's all transitory. And they're sticking with, the, with their three hike dot plot. Obviously, they've already delivered to those hikes. The issue is, is they're saying another three hikes next year and another three hikes in 2019. Uh, and the market flatly disbelieves them. And, and uh, I was opining uh, probably two, three months ago, and also on this show, I believe, that, that it, it appeared to me that the Fed was basically worried about financial stability. I mean, you know, historically has always said, well, there's no asset bubble, it's not our business to prick asset bubbles, et cetera, et cetera. But you have had statements from um, various people within the, uh, the Fed, including Janet Yellen, saying, well, you know, some of these equity prices, for instance, are looking a bit toppy, which is quite unusual. So there was this suspicion that they were really pursuing, in a, in a stealthy manner, some sort of financial stability mandate. Um, but yesterday it changed again because, you know, Janet basically had to admit that the data coming in is soft. And if, you're, if your policy is not being driven by that data, then what is it being driven by? And she's not, she's not saying yet. Um, but yeah, the market is convinced that easy monetary conditions are going to continue. That's going to be, continue to be very supportive financial assets. Um, and, uh, you know, we, we seem to be enjoying uh, I'm not sure we are enjoying it, but we, we are certainly witnessing a, a further melt-up in financial assets. You're seeing rock-bottom volatility. You're seeing reasonably supported asset prices pretty much across the board, uh, but also very, very low volumes. Okay, let's have a look at the first slide that you brought in. Yeah. And uh, um, the, the lower, the lower um, um, trace first, please. Yeah, sure. So, I mean, um, <coughs> this is actually um, it's a, it's a, it's an exchange traded note. So you, you can almost think of it like a sort of an ETF type structure. So this is if, if volatility were an asset class, you can buy and sell it as a share. How would that share have been uh, performed this year? And I think you can see year to date pretty badly. Um, you've lost over half your money uh, on it so far. So everybody's, you know, been, including myself, have been looking for, um, you know, saying, well, look, the markets look a bit complacent. The Fed's saying this. The market's discounting something completely different. Um, something at some point is going to blow. But the problem is that's been a really, really painful trade to carry. Interestingly enough, within the last 24 hours, there's been a big trade put on um, called a strangle, where you're buying both puts and, puts and calls on US 10-year treasuries. So somebody is making quite a big bet that we're going to see a lot more uh, volatility on that on that treasury um, certainly um, all the other lines I mean I guess um, I mean, I'm not going to sort of pass the chart but I mean basically whether it's equities high yield credit 
government bonds, you've done pretty well. You're looking sort of mid-single digit to sort of mid-teen type gains in all of these just within the first six months or so of the year. Would you say the commodity index is probably what probably what people would expect everything to be at now? I mean, that's probably like the true trace and the other markets are bubble markets. Well, I would say so because at the end of the day, it's more rooted in the real economy. And of, but, but of course, a lot of that index is crude oil. But again, if, if the I mean, demand imagine, if, imagine if there. equities hmm. were performing like commodities at the moment, I mean, you'd, you'd have um, a rather soggy time. But the, well, uh, g g given the way that the interest rate outlook is, let's say in the US with yeah. rate hikes this year and next year, uh, well, next year and the year after, um, maybe that's the leading indicator. Is that, is that possible? The commodities are a leading indicator. It's possible. I, I think the Fed's <laughs> facing a dilemma because, I mean, the, the, at the moment they seem to be saying we're data driven but the data doesn't match our rhetoric. So they're either going to say, say, well, look, our reading of where the economy actually is is wrong, in which case they've got to have a rather embarrassing climb down, which probably be good for asset, asset markets over the short term. But of course, you know, the Fed losing yet more credibility is not a good thing, certainly over the longer term. Um, they can feel vindicated and say, well, actually, we were right. This, this soft inflation uh, was just that. It was transitory. It's coming through. Dot plot is back on again, not just for this year, but for next year, 2019, in which case that will really shake the market up because it's, it's absolutely not being discounted. On the other hand, they could say, well, do you know what? Um, we're basically reframing our mandate. We are actually... Um, uh, if you like, asset bubble vigilantes, um, and we're going to tighten even if the inflation data is, um, is, is not working in our favour. The problem is I don't think the market's got a he its head around any of those scenarios at the moment. It's a bit of a mess. OK, let's go on to the next uh, slide, last slide. Yeah, I'm just pointing out that, you know, also, uh, you know, in addition to the interest rate debate, is the other aspect of monetary policy, uh, which is the size of the Fed's balance sheet, which currently stands at a roughly four and a half trillion dollars. Um, they have laid out um, the bones of a plan to start chipping away at that. Uh, there's a working assumption in the market at the moment that they'll probably start to shrink the balance sheet in October of this year um, and accelerate that shrinkage over the, the th th space of three quarters. But even so, I mean, as you can see through this chart, I mean, if you were to plot it um, further, forward. Um, it's going to take you the best part of seven years basically to halve um, the, the, the Fed's balance sheet side. But I would point out that, the, you know, if it was quantitative easing on the way up, by definition, it has to be quantitative tightening on the way down. And I would suggest, because apart from anything else, that's what the Fed said was one of the objectives of quantitative easing was to uh, it was to loosen monetary conditions and boost asset prices, it's probably going to be a headwind for asset prices going forward. And as I said, if you come from where we've come from in that you know, asset price chart uh, that we saw first off, um, it could be difficult. But you know, going back to that, whole, that horrible volatility line, people have been waiting for this for a long time. They've had it absolutely handed to them. They will be in a position to clear up. But you know, as a famous man once said, you know, markets going to remain irrational longer than you can remain solvent. Who was that? Mike Ingram, strategist at BGC Partners, thank you very much. My pleasure.